Hello and welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. Today we are going to go on an in-depth technical deep dive of the F-150 Power Boost Hybrid. What I want to do is show you all of the neat technology, all of the neat features that this hybrid F-150 has to offer. And then of course, we're even going to go through and show you some of the driver assistance stuff because it's amazing what this truck can do. <laughs> Starting up front with the F-150, I have to go over the price, and it's a big number. This thing's nearest makes no difference, $75,000, $80,000. That is a lot of money for a pickup truck. However, I actually think it's worth it, and I actually think it's a pretty good deal. Let me explain why throughout this video, but we'll start up front here. You can see you have the daytime running lights that go around the side, two crazy bright LED uh, uh, diodes here that are your, for your headlights and high beams. You have the limited trim. This has every single option available. Look at the grill on this thing. Absolutely massive. Covers the whole front of the truck. I think there's something like 12 or 14 different grills you can get on F-150. So many to choose from. Of course, coming around the side, you'll see this one has some power running boards, which is pretty neat. Right now they're extended, but I can lock the truck and they'll go away. Also, let me just demonstrate really quick. I'm gonna run over here. Uh, and most newer Fords are doing this, where when you just walk up to them, they will automatically unlock and the running boards will extend. Look, I'm not gonna touch anything on the key. Here they pop out and then I can just open the door. Really nice. Love that feature for sure. Uh, parking sensors all around. The truck actually parks itself. That's probably one thing we're not able to do here in Northern Colorado. There's just no one around. But check this out, still more neat tech on this thing. In terms of the fuel filler, oh, I actually have to depressurize the fuel tank with a little button right around here somewhere. There we go, fuel. And what this will do is it will depressurize the fuel tank. A lot of hybrids and plug-in hybrids create a little bit of positive pressure in the tank. I guess it helps with fuel stabilization for long periods of time. But see this, no cap. You just put the fuel right in there. Nothing unique to this truck. I think all Fords almost be like that, but I love that feature. You can see back here, there's a little bit without lights. This is where the blind spot monitor radars are. And then one of the coolest things, I'm gonna be saying that a lot about this truck is it has a power tailgate. It's actually the first time I've ever reviewed a truck with a full power lift gate. There's two ways you can close it. The first is from the key. The second is reaching under and selecting the button again. But what I've found myself doing is just lifting up a little bit, dropping, and then it finishes the rest of the task. Now, is that really needed in a truck? No, <laughs> but it is nice. Also, it's got some other nifty things back here. Two little ports here for C-clamps, so you can clamp on some things if you want to hold a piece of wood back here or something like this. You also have the traditional, you know, Ford step. Fords have had this for a long time, so you can actually get yourself up into the bed with the uh, railing. This is not unique, but what is really unique to this truck is this switchboard right here. So in this truck, you have four different areas for power. You have 220 volt outlets on the left, 220 volt outlets on the right, and they both go up to 20 amps. They're NEMA 520 outlets. And then you also have a NEMA 1430, a locking plug. And this is really neat. This will do uh, 30, amp output at 240 volts, 7.2 kilowatts, continuous for I think up to 32 hours before the engine runs out of juice. Now, I wanted to charge a Tesla from zero to 100% and we were gonna do this last night, but the port doesn't work on this truck. It's got a fault. Now, is that really the truck's fault? Hard to say, this one's a pre-production unit, so hopefully we'll get a production one back to test but unfortunately we were not able to make that video for you guys. Now you'll notice up here on the top of the cat, there's some things. This one has, let me just show you over here, you have lights that will light up the entire cab. Also look over there above the power ports, you'll see extra lights. This thing lights up like a Christmas tree at night. And then you have a camera back here so you can monitor your load and your trailer, it's pretty neat. Now I'd like to talk about the powertrain before we go inside because that's where the real tech happens. But this is insane, this is, uh, is it the most powerful F-150 in the lineup? It might be, I think it is. 430 horsepower, 570 pound-feet of torque. It has a twin turbocharged, three and a half liter EcoBoost engine up front. 
and uh, those turbos when they kick on both of them they just provide a ton of torque but also you have a 34 kilowatt electric motor and generator on the back side of that engine and that will provide uh, power in between gear changes it also allows for electric driving when the high voltage battery is topped up and I've been able to get a little over a mile at a time driving electric which is pretty neat so it has a 1.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. It is thermally managed, believe it or not. Looking at you, Nissan Leaf, you have like 62 kilowatt hours and you're not liquid cooled. This F-150 has a liquid cooled battery pack. Gotta love that. Also, it can charge up the battery from the combustion engine only. No plug-in option on this truck yet, but this is, I believe, the platform the battery electric F-150 is to come. And this is kind of a cool taste into what that truck might be like. It's the first time I've had the opportunity to drive electric in a pickup truck. And man, was it seamless and awesome and cool. I really, really loved it. So 1.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. It has a 7.2 kilowatt onboard inverter to power those plugs in the back. Like I mentioned, it can go something like 30 hours. Anyway, we'll, we'll get in the car. I'll show you the acceleration in a little bit. But now I want to talk about some of the features in this truck because ah there's so many let's do it all right we're going to start the interior tech portion and buckle up because this is going to take a little while so first off under here i'm going to put my phone on the wireless charger so i just slap it down there and then i can close this lid it also has usb a and usb c now i'm going to turn the truck on all wireless of course just like we saw before comfort access moves the steering wheel closer to me the seat up this way now i won't go into all of these gauges and settings because i've already done a 30 minute plus video on just getting the settings set up on this truck there were so many but there are a few notable things i want to mention the first is this shifter is really neat. So you can see it works just like a normal shifter, park, reverse, neutral, drive. I can select up and down the gears on my side and then put it in manual mode if needed. But I can also fold down the shifter with the touch of a button. And once that's folded down, I can take my center armrest, which by the way is insanely deep. Look how deep this thing is and massive. And you can even remove this little tray if you want to. And I can fold it the other way. So now I have a full working space. You can eat lunch, you can write papers out here, just a really nice tray. I think this is one of the neatest innovations I've seen in car interiors in a long time. So that's to do with all of this. By the way, I think there's 10 cup holders in this truck. You just should know that. We have a 120 volt outlet over here. This is the circuit breaker for it, but here's the outlet. So it's up to uh, 20 amps, I guess. Is that correct? 120 volt, but it's a NEMA 520. So I guess you can pull 20 amps from that. That's pretty cool. Uh, also has the uh, Bang & Olufsen sound system in here, which sounds really good. I'd say it doesn't get loud enough, but the quality is awesome. Even has speakers over my head. I mean, this is a pickup truck and it's got speakers everywhere. It's a really, really neat system. Before we dive into this system though, I do wanna talk about this glass roof. It's unbelievable. It's got a really nice shade that can automatically close and go back. It also has a power rear window. So how do I do that? This switch right here, I can open and close that rear window, which is really neat. Uh, other than that, LED lighting all throughout here, tons of storage. We're not talking about that. We've done a, a review on this truck, so that will be going up before or after this, I'm not sure. There's so many features in this truck. It has a whole features tab. First off, look at this massive screen right here. This thing is absolutely huge. I have it in night mode right now. There's a day and a night, of course. Uh, driver assistance tab. I am gonna take you out for a drive in this truck, but just look at how many options you have here uh, for all of the assist. Uh, really neat is this is the control for that power outlets in the back that I showed you. So you have two 3.6 kilowatt onboard inverters. It has a generator mode that will let the truck run and then it'll actually uh, lock the doors and everything but keep the combustion engine cycling for your electric load until it runs out of gas so i think that's kind of neat um let's go over here this is one of my favorite features zone lighting so if you're out at the job site at night you want to light up the side of the truck you can choose what side you want to light up right from here and uh, honestly it gets super bright and lights up the entire area i mean it was blinding my neighbors across the street i mean it was really cool absolutely love that feature i think that needs to be made into more trucks come on over here this has a lot of towing features as well so what you can do is you can go through a checklist to say what type of trailer that you're connecting and here are all the things that you need to do in order to hook it up of course that makes sense just walks you through it but more than that you can add a specific trailer and then choose to bring up that trailer again. So you can actually say, hey, I have my gooseneck on the truck right now and here are all the settings for it. And then back over here, you can manage them, of course. 
It'll tell you when a trailer is connected and then it even has special traction control so that if the trailer starts to sway a little bit, it'll pulse the brakes on the truck to counteract the trailers, move it to bring it back in line. I think that's great technology. Even better than that is the pro trailer options here. I can turn this thing on. You can select the trailer. Right now we're not hooked up to anything, but you can even back up the trailer with this. And what this does is it will do the steering for you. You know where you always have to think you turn right to make the trailer go left left and you turn left to make the trip and it gets kind of confusing this way you just say where you want it to go with the switch and the truck does all the steering on the cab side i think that's super neat it also has a built-in brake booster for the trailer so you can choose your gain and then also manually control the trailer brakes that's just towing i mean it's pretty amazing what this thing can do also of course has power uh running boards i showed you those getting into the truck okay let's talk drive modes and things like this we have two high, four high, four auto, and four low. These modes are great, and it, they will automatically change based off of which driving mode I put the truck in. So right now, I can switch us over into sport mode, and then we can go to eco, and then <laughs> tow haul, and normal, and slippery, and deep snow and sand, and mud ruts. And all of these different settings will change the throttle calibration, brake pedal calibration. Keep in mind it is an electrically boosted braking system because it's a hybrid. Uh, it will change everything about how the truck drives, all the calibrations, it'll even choose the modes as to what you need to go into. So. The other cool thing is it has an electronic locking rear differential that I can control, which is really great. So I can go over here and I can say too high and lock the rear diff for mad skids. And even then, and then you can go sideways in your hybrid F-150 with, without even thinking about it. Now we need to get into the seats because these seats are just insane. So first off, they are heated and cooled and the steering wheel is heated. All of that is really neat, but take a look at some of this stuff. You stay there, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna demonstrate this seat to you. So, the seat itself looks absolutely gorgeous, which is really cool. So, take a look at this. You can put this backrest uh, bolster all the way back, or you can crank it up, so if your back ends up curving up a little bit, you have this as an adjusted sculptured. Now, the seats are also massaging. There's a whole bunch of different massage modes. I'm going to click the massage button on the side of this seat here. You can see all of the different kinds, low, medium, and high. If I turn off the massage, I can choose what part of the seat I want to contour right here. So take a look here. I can say I want the top bit to be pushed out a little bit. I want the bottom bit out. Actually, for me, I prefer the bottom all the way out and the rest all the way in. And I think that's just unbelievably comfortable. Uh, the massage functions are really good. And really even neater than that is this seat has speakers in the headrest. You'll notice I said there's a speaker up here in the roof, a whole bunch in the truck. But also look at the perforations in the headrest here. There's actually speakers in here so you can have audio piped directly into your ear. It's really kind of a neat system and it sounds really crisp, really warm. It's a great sound system. So that's all of the seats and like kind of nifty tech right off the front. I also have buttons over here, but it's all pretty standard. What I'd love to do is show you some of the driver assistance stuff with Copilot 360 and talk about how this truck has over the air software updates to make that better. And then we'll end the video. So let's go take it out on the road and drive it. Let's talk driver assistance in the F-150. You get all the normal stuff, automatic high beams, parallel parking, it does all that. But this truck has something called Copilot 360. So come on up here and let me show you this. So you can see here on the screen, I've enabled adaptive cruise control and lane keeping with the buttons here on this side of the wheel. I've selected the speed to go 70 miles per hour. I have a blue holding of the steering wheel logo like this in the left instrument cluster. And what that is saying is that the car is steering itself. It's also keeping a distance to the car in front. I can change this distance here, and right now I have it on two of four. Now, right now I have to keep my hands on the wheel and of course always monitor the driving situation. But you'll see there's a little black bar here and another little polished black bar over here. And these are both eye tracking infrared sensors. So like we saw when we drove the Mustang Mach-E, this truck will receive an over the air software update that will allow it to drive hands free like this. Now technically you can drive it, it physically operates with your hands off the wheel like this. It's not designed to right now, it says keep your hands on the steering wheel, but soon that will be the case and I think that's really neat. 
some other cool things that this truck does is it uses the speed relative to the GPS uh, speed data that it gets up from the road. What that means is while I'm cruising along and I'm in a 75 mile per hour zone, for example, and then I switch over to a 55 mile per hour zone, the car will drop the speed down automatically. We'll also raise the speed back up when needed. Uh, in addition to that, you can also set that automatic speed adjustment to go higher than the speed limit. So in the case of my settings here, I've set it to go five miles per hour over the speed limit. Now, one of my favorite parts about this car, since we have some open road ahead of us, is the acceleration. Again, 430 horsepower, 570 pound-feet of torque. Watch the acceleration here. Foot down. Boost is on. Just freaking shreds. It's so quick. Uh, it has so much pulling power. I'm not sure if you'll ever need any more. This really is fast. You know, we're getting in the era of super trucks. We have Cybertruck doing zero to 60 and who knows what. Hummer EV with a thousand horsepower. Ram TRX with 700 horsepower. This at 430 feels really fast as is. Uh, I'm not quite sure you need any more, especially in a pickup like this. Anyway, the driver assistant stuff is just super comfortable. I can just kick it back on here and it just takes over the driving. It makes a long drive so much more comfortable, so much more relaxing. You can see it says, hey, we hit the line and it pushed us back in there. And now we're back to the blue bubble where the car is maintaining steering all by itself. Really a neat feature. It just got confused because you can see there's two lines here. That's why you still need that human behind the wheel. Um, but I would say on a highway situation, especially those pre-mapped highways, it just goes, goes, and goes. And all you have to do is take over in situations like that where it can mess up. And uh, it's not a perfect driverless system. It will never be in this truck, but for long highway cruises, it's really, really awesome. And uh, I think that kind of concludes our quick tech review, the F-150. So much stuff that we haven't even gone over. Uh, a lot of it I've hit in our full setup and first drive. You know, we get a new car to review every week, sometimes two or three, and every time I get a new car, I always start by setting up all of the settings and options and taking everyone for the first drive along with me to really shake down what the thing is all about. So I went through a lot of the tech in that video as well. This is just on the things that I found most interesting about this truck. Anyway, we will see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye.